Back in 2016, there was an elephant that succumbed to TB in Kruger. We were trying to understand what caused this to happen to this elephant. We performed the different assays on the animal and this confirmed what we thought has been happening for many years. Bovine TB, he was definitively diagnosed here yeah, within Kruger in 1990. But this was different. It turned out to be human TB. Bovine TB came from Europe with the first European settlers. We believe that cattle that were imported to this continent that had bovine TB intermingled with wildlife like buffalo. It then spread to wildlife locally in the Eastern Cape. It became established and then it spread from there. Primarily it's been a disease of domestic cattle and it's only since the 1990s that we've been really aware of it being a wildlife disease. So it can spill over from domestic animals into wildlife. The Kruger's now actually endemic for animal TB, which is M. bovis. They found that in fact it was already quite widespread, particularly in our buffalo herds. There are records of it being found in kudu. Lion, antelope. And we have actually detected M. bovis in a couple of elephants. You know, we found the disease in black rhinos, but this is the first time we've really become aware that this is a disease of the system. And a first to identify a fatal case of human TB in a wild elephant. TB often is only thought of as a human disease, but in fact it's a multi-host disease. We have to keep in mind that there's 11 Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex members. The more popular complex members are M. bovis and M. tuberculosis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is mostly reported in humans. And typically animals get infected with M. bovis. So there's human strains of TB and there's also animal strains. And any one of them can cause the disease. So we use that general term TB to talk about the disease, even though the disease can be caused by the group of organisms that have different variations. So reports are increasingly being detected where we do find zoonosis and reverse zoonosis. In a wildlife park, TB crosses the border from buffaloes maintaining the disease into cattle, goats, soil, water, and subsequently into the owners themselves. So M. bovis can in itself be transmitted to humans. But that's one direction at the wildlife livestock human transmission interface. So it can be that if you have visitors visiting a wildlife park and people have a high burden of TB and they feed the elephants, then, then it flows back into the animal again. And of course with conservation, once we get this into endangered species, then that is going to affect our ability to be able to move animals into new areas to repopulate those protected areas because we don't want to spread the disease. But there's also major implications, both economically and also health-wise, for the country. Many of our rural communities heavily rely on their cattle as a food source, as a milk source. And agriculture focused on livestock is one of the third biggest contributors to the country's GDP. So if the cattle are affected by bovine TB, they will lose weight, they will produce less milk. And if any infected animal is picked up, a farm is placed under quarantine, those animals are slaughtered, and then there's no compensation for the owner. And then that would have major implications on their food sources and that's why early detection is so important. We want to be able to identify it early. The main focus is to break transmission that happens amongst wildlife, livestock and people. So to be able to do that, you need to determine whether the animal is infected with M. bovis. 
but the problem is you're always restricted by the tools you use. The big issue with bovine TB, it's always been extremely difficult for us to diagnose the disease. One of the biggest challenges we are faced with in wildlife samples is because you don't get species-specific commercially available reagents for the species we work in. We don't have lion or elephant or rhino-specific reagents that we use. No company is stocking antibodies specifically for lions, elephants or rhinos. So we have to do a lot of research into what type of antibodies are available and do they cross-react with our species. And that is why we need to optimize the human test and other commercially available kits to see if we can better diagnose embryos in these animals. Also, most of the time when an animal is diagnosed, it is typically culled or euthanized. But when you have endangered species, you're not going to go around and cull all of the infected animals. So we have to get creative in the way that we then minimize the spread both within the park as well as on the boundaries. So our research focuses on animal TB. One of the main focus areas for the animal TB group is diagnosing bovine TB. So detection of TB in animals can happen in two ways. The one would be the direct testing. Where you can directly look for the bacteria itself. By going all the way into the lungs to actually retrieve possible bacteria in the lungs. We originally started off by doing TB testing in animals that either died naturally or that were killed because of clinical symptoms. Initially, the only way we could diagnose it was to do a necropsy on an animal, take samples. But Stellenbosch has allowed us now to be able to diagnose the disease in the living animal, but in multiple species. So by using indirect methods, we draw blood from animals. And then if you see a response, that will be a proxy to if he had a previous infection or maybe he's currently infected or diseased. Which means that we don't rely on the animal being dead before we can actually apply the diagnostic testing. So we do work closely with some parks where we run test and slaughter programs for the past 25 years. So the Animal TB group originally started off by doing TB testing in buffalo. That expanded and included many more wildlife species. We've been screening elephants now since 2016 and as part of that we collect blood samples and respiratory samples which include bronchial viola lavage and trunk wash samples. TB typically affects the lungs, so we want to target site of disease. We typically try to recover about 200 mls of bowel fluid by going all the way into the lungs, which we then subdivide for our different cultures back in the lab. So we'll do mycobacterial culture back at the Stellenbosch lab to detect if the pathogen is present or not. Stellenbosch is taking it to another level, they're starting to look at the epidemiology of the disease. And they've seen a very significant drop in prevalence because of that intervention. What's interesting for us as an animal research group is that different animals have different levels of resistance to M. Bovis. So now you're looking at a population level, you're looking at a systems level. So we're trying to understand what it is that makes some animals able to clear infection whether it's through minimizing density or genetics. And for us it's interesting to do that comparative biology. So we get an idea of if this animal gets exposed to TB, does it develop disease? If it develops disease, does it die of it or does its immune system manage to fight it? So the animal TB group is expanding into the One Health concept, whereby we're saying that the TB problem is not one directional. So animal TB can be transmitted between species or even within a species. So people do infect animals and animals would then become a reservoir for human disease, reinfecting humans again. Animal TB is it's a global problem. There are literally millions of animals that are infected with TB all over the world. So here in Cougar National Park, we have over 20 different species that have been affected by TB. The big question of what's its impact has still been asked. We're still at the stage of developing tests for identifying those animals. 
The research is important because we need to know how we as researchers can help by developing tests. If we don't take care of the TB problem in our domestic animals, in our wildlife species, there will be overspilling to our humans and that will add to the total TB burden we see in humans. Because if we can't eradicate animal TB, we'll never be able to eradicate human TB because they're interconnected.